It's time to help people customize and save with Liberty Mutual. Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Another edition of Legend Sports and Amplify. And we're telling stories about baseball and baseball history and Negro Leagues and card art and collecting, you name it. And I am really happy to have on this morning uh, author, traveler, storyteller, Ethan Bryan. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing well. It's, uh, I've got, I'm in air conditioning, so that's good. Uh, right, right. I know. So uh, we were talking just a little bit before you got on here. You're up uh, in uh, Missouri, and I'm in Texas. You're probably running into the same uh, same heat we've had the last couple of weeks. It's been pretty brutal down here as well. So uh, I love to hear good stories, and I really appreciate good storytellers, and you are definitely one of those. You have written countless stories stories on baseball and inspirational stories and um, and and your travels and and so forth and and I really love to hear how people got started on that by you know the origin story because it, it's something that baseball and and these types of things they kind of get in your blood right and so uh, you know I love to know why and how people got to where they are today so tell tell us what what got you here today oh my gosh uh it, there, I don't even know where to begin to answer that question. There's so much to it. Um, all right, well, I, give me a. Where do you want me to start? So you know, there's something at some point in your life that got you and got baseball into your blood, and and it made you. You know, I have I have some things in my life that I go back and I look about. You know, talks with people when I was seven years old, and you go wow, I never knew I'd be doing that 40 years later, you know? And and so somewhere along the line, everybody's got that kind of that origin that, that, that made you start to, you know, have that passion for the writing and the research and the travel that you've done. It's, it's really been an amazing, amazing ride for you. Well, I'll, I'll start with this story. Um, my, uh, my dad is a veterinarian and he went to, to vet school at uh, University of Missouri. And after he graduated, we moved to the Kansas City area to, to Lee Summit, where he started starts his first vet practice. And my mom, uh, my mom was a preschool teacher at the time. And in the spring, uh, let me get the year right, I think it was spring of 1979, they had a preschool night. Uh, the teachers at the preschool went to a Royals game at, uh, at then Royals Stadium, all turf infield, all turf, all turf stadium. Uh, and the Royals were playing, uh, if I remember right, uh, Baltimore, Baltimore Orioles. I was about four, four and a half years old. The game went to extra innings. Um, and my parents just decided to, to stay for, for the duration of the game, which ended up going 16 innings. Uh, George Brett hit for the cycle wow. and won the game on a walk-off home run. And that was the game that, um, Baseball really, I mean, like a light bulb clicked in, in, in my in my brain and baseball really became a passion for me for, from from that from that time on. So that that's when baseball got into my blood. Then uh, a couple of years later, we moved to Colorado, went to Colorado for a year, moved to Springfield in the, the summer of 1982. I was starting second grade. And, you know, second grade teacher says, you know, write a story, this, this open-ended topic, write a story about something. And so I wrote a story about the, uh, the Royals playing the Braves in the World Series. And, and of course, I had the Royals stomping all over them. And at the very, very end of that, um, I, still ha I still have the paper somewhere, but at the end of it, uh, Miss St. Jim wrote, Ethan, you would make a great sports writer for the, for the local paper. Um, and, and I was like, I, I remember I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be a sports writer. I want to play baseball. And so you have written how many books now? You have. Um, it's close to a dozen, right around there. Now, the thing about it, and I, I have noticed this, uh, and I've had this discussion with several uh, other authors and researchers. Sometimes you can get into other subjects 
and touch on other things and use sports and or baseball as kind of a, a, a gateway to get into it where people will be a little more receptive to listening as opposed to like trying to write something about a topic and maybe people are eh, they're not sure, they don't know much about it, they, they really, you know. But sports and baseball, uh, I think, and, and the long history of baseball in this country, it touches on so many pieces of, of everybody's daily life for a long, long time. Uh, it makes that story somewhat, you know, easier to tell and people maybe will listen to it, uh, be a little more receptive to hearing what you got to say. Well, I, I completely agree. I think uh, baseball is a wonderful metaphor for, for life that we live and for, for um, how, we, how we conduct our days. And, you know, it's you've got the individual part aspect of it, but it's also within a team. It's not completely reliant on you. And, and so much of our country's history in particular is tied into the game. And it, it just provides wonderful avenues and metaphors for being able to discuss all of life. How many metaphors there are that you hear in daily conversation, right? Uh, that, that come from baseball roots, you know? Uh, you know, the thing about... Um, and a lot of these conversations I've had, uh, you know, center around the Negro Leagues. That's been re the reason why I started doing these, because I, th I felt that that story needed to be told. There was so much, um, you know, uh, misinformation, no information, lack of uh, information that people were not aware of some of the stories and what it was all about and, and why it happened. But... Um, the story itself is really, really an inspirational one to me because what they had to overcome with the racism, the Jim Crow of the time, and they kept on going and they, they overcame and they persevered. And, and a lot of the stories that you tell and the books that you've written are along a similar vein, right? That, uh, that, that uh, underlying theme of, of perseverance that I've yeah. never given up, of, of choosing hope despite the... Not the the obstacles and barriers I've had to face are, are nothing compared to, you know, Jackie and, and others ha had to endure just to play a game that they love. Mm -hmm. and, and because of that game, uh, the repercussions and, and the ripple effects throughout throughout culture have been massive. Absolutely. And, and the fact that they were able to still persevere. And, and, you know, that's why I've been trying to have people on to tell these kinds of stories, because um, there's a lot, so little of it known about the Negro Leagues, but other aspects of, of, of uh, the sport and, and the background that, that people find fascinating. I mean, I've had people on that are artists and card artists, and uh, uh, some do poetry, some do, uh, you know, write short stories, uh, you know, some find something about the sport of baseball that, that they find fascinating. And, and the one that you, the, I just put up the book, um, The Year of Playing Catch. Tell us about this one, because this is an odyssey that you literally took an entire year. Uh, it was an unplanned odyssey. Um, <laughs> for, for Christmas, uh, 2017 my youngest daughter is an artist and and uh, actually the ball that's in that picture there she gave me that ball for Christmas and it just says dad want to play catch on it cool and when she gave it to me I thought it was kind of like how kids would give you a gift certificate you know for dishes or cleaning their room or whatever I thought she was giving this to me as a gift certificate to play catch whenever I, I wanted uh, playing catch has just been a, a passion of mine for almost the entirety of my of my life um, it wasn't until six months into, into 2018 I learned that it wasn't a gift certificate at all. It was just supposed to be art. Um, so on, on January 1st, 2018, you know, you're kind of mm -hmm. battling the post-holiday blues and figuring out what to do. And, and uh, I just I saw, I saw that baseball on my writing desk, and I just, I just yelled out to her. I said, hey, Sophie, you want to play catch? And, and she, um, she was quiet for a moment. Uh, her sport is swimming. She is a, an epic and incredible long distance swimmer. She can put me to shame in the pool day in, day out. Uh, and she's like, well, outside? And I, you know, pull up the weather app and it says it's one degree outside. She's like, um, <laughs> sure, of course. Yes, you, you don't play ball inside. We're going to go outside and play catch. She's like, well, are we going to go to a baseball field? And I was trying to think, well, what baseball field could I access on January 1st? And there's a one that used to have a semi-pro um, fast pitch softball team on it. And I was like, yeah, we, I think I know, I know a park we can go to. And so for several minutes it was quiet. And I just figured that 
she was ignoring me and then all of a sudden she's like okay i'll do it i'll go play catch and, and we layered up went to this this park <laughs> threw the ball about 30 times and it was so cold and uh that afternoon my oldest daughter agrees to play and catch and we stepped out in the backyard and just drove the dog absolutely bonkers as she was trying to steal the ball and and for some reason uh no no real reason in particular other than it was january 1st i took a selfie i posted it on an old blog that i would write on about once or twice a month and said something along the lines of uh happy new year it's cold here but we're playing catch and having fun mm -hmm. So that night at dinner, I just kind of talking through resolutions and stuff. And they're like, Dad, what would happen if you play catch every day for a whole year? And I was like, <laughs> I, I know what would happen. I would need surgery. I had to, <laughs> this is not even. And, and so they are the ones that, that get all the credit of encouraging me and challenging me and just gently pushing me into this in, endeavor. Uh, uh, just walking me through it the first couple of days until I start to see, hey, yeah, this is this is something I, I want to do. And, and once I finally said, I'm in, I, I jumped in with both feet and it was it was it was such an incredible year. And I, I'm still um, unpacking it and processing it and learning from that experience. You know, what's what's really uh, interesting, and what's funny about it is when I saw it, right, um, it, it got me to start to think about how many times in my life uh, I've played catch and how many times, you know, obviously you're doing it. If you're playing the sport, you're, you're, you're warming up. You're, you're, that's part of, of the whole baseball ritual. But it also got me thinking about all the times over, over the years of playing catch with my dad in my, like you just mentioned, in, in my backyard as a kid. My brother was in the Navy as when I was a kid. So he would come home and that would be one of the first things that we would do. And while you're playing catch, you're you're talking. You're having all kinds of conversations about things and it's just kind of something you're doing that's in, in the background. But it, it's kind of like what we were talking about with, with topics, right? It, it gets you to a place where you can kind of relax your mind and talk about things. And, and I've had all kinds of conversations. I, I can only imagine a year. So tell us about some of. Tell us about this year of playing catch. You traveled to different places and played catch with how many people <laughs> over yeah. that year? I think the final total was somewhere. It's somewhere north of 530. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! We traveled in 10 states, uh, more than 12,000 miles, and none of this is planned. No, uh, I'm sure. So, uh, I reached out to a friend who I knew was a, a ball player. Uh, for one of the local colleges, um, and he just had, he was a he was a news anchor, and I and it was it was uh, January fourth, January fifth, somewhere around there, and I saw him on my TV, and I knew him as an anchor, I knew him as a ball player, and I was like, I'm just going to reach out to him because I I mean I was literally just taking it day by who am I going to play catch with today? I don't know what I'm doing, so I reached out to him and I said, Hey, uh, do you want to play catch? I basically need somebody for every day of the I've got nothing. Awesome. I think I'm going to pursue this idea of doing it every day for a year. And he, he says, oh, I love this. Um, let's do a news story. Awesome. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, no, this is <laughs> horrible. I don't, I don't want to be, I mean, the, the thought of being <laughs> on camera and in front of people and, and talking, I mean, even getting that email from him, you know, I guess it was, I think it was actually a Twitter message. You getting that message from him, I, my pulse just like doubled. <laughs> okay. And, um, so in the spirit of the moment, I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And that uh, broadcast with Daniel went crazy. It went from coast to coast. And I started, uh, I remember one morning, it was probably around cool. the, uh, the 10th or the 11th of January, somewhere around there, 12th. Uh, I'm, I'm waking up, I drive my daughters to school. And so I'm just clicking in, trying to get my brain engaged before to get them while they're getting ready for school. And I checked my email, I had something like a hundred emails. And I was like, what in the world? And they, they were all like, well, when you come to Georgia, let me know, we can play catch. Or when you're in Chicago, awesome. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm in Missouri, my life is in Missouri. My wife works in Missouri. My my daughters go to school in Missouri. And, and so it was around um, day, 99 or 100 somewhere right around there the local alamo movie theater agreed to do a screening uh, a field of dreams on the big screen 
and I would get to tell a story in front of it about well, who I am and why I'm playing catch and all the proceeds from that screening would benefit our Miracle League program. Awesome. Are you familiar with Miracle League? I have. I am. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, so we did this, this screening and uh, my family's there awesome. and it's the first time I've watched the movie on the big screen, you know, like 25 years or whatever. And, and we're sitting on the back row and I, re I mean, this is still very vivid in my memory when Ray leaves to go pick up Terrence Mann to go on the road trip in the bus. I'm sitting next to my wife and I'm like, we need to go on a catch playing trip. Mm -hmm. This is something we need to do. And, and I, I say, it's just, we have to do it. And she just looks at me. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. almost, almost similar to, to Annie in the movie. And she's like, you're right, we do. And so um, cool. we, we charted out a, a 10 day trip. We called it the tour of hope when we just did the Midwest. And if I, if I think about it, I can probably get through the itinerary, but um, we went up to Kansas city. I played in a, in a charity softball game on, it was 102 degrees. And I, I mean, like for the first four days, the first five days of the trip, we set uh, record highs on the, on each of those days. Like in Kansas city, we went to <laughs> Omaha, got to play catch on, on the field, Omaha storm chasers with their GM. Uh, we went to South Dakota, Sioux Falls, South Dakota and hung out with Nate Rickard, a baseball seams company, uh, came awesome. across Iowa and, and played catch, um, with a guy named Ryan who has, a, who's built his own, who has a baseball field in his backyard that, that he has, um, he has he has preserved for and and now he's got kids coming for baseball practices from cool. from counties around. Mm -hmm. uh, we went across Iowa uh, to Rockford. Um, got to play catch with Mary Moore of the. Uh, she played for the Springfield Sallies in the All American Girls Professional Baseball League. Cool. And then went to Chicago. Met twin brothers, who who, who had emailed me and said, "When you get to Chicago, let us know." And they, they have since become very good friends and, and we stay in touch. So, I mean, it was a, it was a 10 day trip with the sole purpose of playing catch. And the whole time I'm worried about, well, I don't want to bore my wife. I don't want to drive my daughters crazy. And it really was a fantastic I bet. family vacation. We had so much fun. I bet. I bet. What were some of the conversations you had while you were playing catch with, with these, with these people? Um, well, uh, one that jumps out, I mean, and, and so while you're playing catch, your, your, your whole brain is engaged. I mean, mm -hmm. playing catch is the whole body experience. You're, you're coordinating both sides of your body. And so it's, it's work. And, and the whole time while we're playing catch, one of the things I'm thinking is I don't want the other person to get injured. <laughs> I'm going to do what I, I want to judge uh, as quickly as I can their comfort level with throwing a ball and catching a ball. So, you know, I'm, I'm aiming for the glove side of their body and mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it low or, or, or off centered from their torso and stuff. And, and, and so I'm thinking all these things and then all of a sudden, uh, once we find that comfort zone you and, just and do it. start uh, opening up to me, I remember Ryan started telling me he's a testicular cancer survivor and this is how his story starts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm here to play catch at your baseball field. And now you're opening up to something that changed your life. And so his, he started with the, the, the month that he was diagnosed with testicular cancer and they moved into this house that has this baseball field. And at the end of the year, um, they celebrate with his wife getting pregnant with their firstborn. Oh, wow. And so it, it is, it is this whole life celebration. Mm -hmm. And then, then we drive we drive from corner to corner from the uh, uh, northwest corner of Iowa to the, the south, uh, yeah, northwest to the southeast corner where I, I connected with my godson, uh, Big B, who was born with this incredibly rare uh, heart uh, malformation. And he's had uh, three, three open heart surgeries in four years. And, and you know he says he said something like um, heart heart surgery is hard enduring open heart surgery is hard but having two older brothers is hard too. <laughs> so oh like, wow! 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he's got this great, and he's such a bright and inquisitive kid. Um, and, and you know, he greets me with, "We're going to go play baseball together, right? We're going to go. We're, we're here to to play catch." And, and so he, here he is. How old is he? At the time, he was four. I got to to see him again this summer, uh, just uh, right awesome. after he turned seven at the Field of Dreams. Oh, and, cool! And he's he's doing well. He he's uh, he asks a million questions, uh, and and he's just a he's just a bright bright young uh, young boy, and it just just a delight. And so, um, go from there, and I, I get to go play catch with Mary Moore, who who's in her mid eighties. And uh, she she played for Springfield Sally's led her her led her team in all kinds of offensive categories and we're at Byer Stadium, where the Rockford Peaches played. Cool. And she starts telling me she's like, well this is where my last game was, you know. Well she she had uh, hit a single, was stretching it into a double, slides into second, and I think uh, her foot got caught in the bag. Second baseman comes down on her ankle and she severely sprains her ankle, and that's how her career ended. Hmm. I was like, so she, we were back at, at the at the stadium where her career ends playing catch, wow. and she still has an arm, and she she's at eighty, utter, <laughs> utter, utter utter delight. I bet, I bet. So that's what I'm saying. Like these these are the kinds of stories I think that people uh, need to hear. You know, I, I mentioned before we got on here about uh, to me, you know, the internet. Um, it, it kind of was. Um, uh, it, it, it turned into kind of a mess over the over the decades. You know, some of the nonsense that's on there, you don't know what to believe, what you're not to believe. But this past year and a half with this pandemic and with the ability to stay connected with people when there were some times when, when you couldn't or shouldn't, uh, it finally, I think, has served it, it, its, its purpose of bringing people closer together. For a long time, I always kept thinking, all right, wait a minute, uh, the Internet... And computers are supposed to bring people together. Yet all I see are people not paying attention to each other because they're they're on their phone and they're paying attention to something else. And now it actually served its purpose in the last year to year and a half of having people be able to do something like this. You know, connect and talk to someone um, that they would never be able to do uh, otherwise. And and so I think it's finally starting to serve serve some purpose. Um, you know, in, in a positive way. But the one thing about the internet, these stories I love. What what cracks me up is some of the stuff. I see like on, on Twitter or Instagram where uh, total nonsense and it gets like a million likes and it's like wait a minute seriously like wh what on earth or so someone who's just posting you know nonsense or like just reposting pictures and they have like 60,000 followers and it's like y you didn't do anything I mean people like you have done something that's a positive impact on people's lives and more people should know about that, and 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 I hope appreciate it. I think I think it's fantastic. Um, so I got to ask you this: since you brought up Field of Dreams, is it have a catch or play catch? <laughs> Which, um, <laughs> from my experience, from my firsthand research, I think it matters on on where you are. Um, for me, in the Midwest, it, it was play a catch. Was uh, it okay? Yeah, let's go play catch. You want to play catch, Dad? Um, and I, from what I can tell, have a catch is somewhere uh, uh, of New England origins. Okay. Um, what about what about what about you? I I was Pennsylvania. I mean, I grew up in Northeast PA, which is not far from New York, north of Philadelphia. We always played catch. Um, and, you know, uh, I never heard of Have a Catch, honestly, until Feel the Dreams came out. And I just read the other day where Kevin Costner, uh, he was like, wait, what is this? I mean, he, he, he didn't even, he was a little taken uh, by Have a Catch, too. But, you know, it, like you said, it probably is something regional or whatever that you grew up with. But, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a play a catch. It's a game. Uh, I don't know how you have a catch, but I guess I mean whatever whatever you prefer. But I just thought it was interesting. So you went, you were at the Field of Dreams game. No, I was not at the Field of Dreams game. Um, my wife and I did another small tour okay. this summer. We went uh, uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, Rockford, and the Field of Dreams, and we gave away um, new gloves to ball players who needed gloves. And so we were able to. Awesome. Uh, the, the Field of Dreams is where it ended, and I 
was all dressed out in my baseball uniform and, and was able to give a, a new glove to a ball player who was actually from uh, from Wyoming. So that was pretty cool. Very cool. So out of this 365 day odyssey, or 365 days of playing catch, what was the most bizarre place that you played catch? Bizarre. Um, it's probably early on uh, towards, I think, I can't remember if it was the end of January or beginning of February, we were uh, going to visit friends in Kansas City. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, hey, I haven't played catch today. I, I need to connect with someone to play catch. And, and we're like, well, all right, well, we'll just, when we get to Kansas City, you can play with Jake. That's who, Jake, Jake and Jen, we were staying at their house. Uh, so the plan was to play catch with Jake, but we didn't get there. You know, it was, it was after dark when we get there. And so we're like, so we found a uh, skate park an outdoor skate park with, with quarter pipe and all that had um, manual lights that you could turn on uh, just on a, a timed lights, like a 30 minute timer. Every 30 minutes, you have to go turn it and, and, and it resets and everything. So we played catch in a, in a skate park about 10 o'clock at night under the lights and, and running up the walls of a skate park is really has a, is a very similar feeling to, to trying to scale a wall to, to catch a home run. So that's, probably one of the most unique uh there was another day i was scheduled to play catch with um our local fire chief and in, in springfield and it was absolutely pouring i mean just thunderstorm and we found a, a bank drive through in downtown uh springfield that is completely covered and and so we just we played catch in a bank drive through in early early morning uh, before they opened and had had any traffic, so those are. I mean, when I stop when I stop to think about it, I'm sure there's there's more. Uh, one of my favorites that I played a catch a couple different times was in front of the Buck O'Neill mural in downtown. Cool. Kansas. That, that's just that mural is just it's such an incredible work of art. And then I was um, I was on on the field of legends with Bob Kendrick. That was nice, gorgeous, a wonderful experience. And, and my daughters got to hear him tell stories for the first time and that was their first chance meeting him and that was um that was that was a fantastic i bet i bet um i didn't even realize that till i till i was checking out your website which is ethanbryan.com for everybody who uh would like to check it out but there is a national play a catch have a catch day or what 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 started um, two years ago so this is the second year of it uh, national play catch week Wow! It's on Father's Day and lasts the whole week, and that's the um, that's the that's the week that my wife and I went on the the Catching Hope tour of giving out gloves and encouraging kids to get out. I mean, just ball players who who needed a new glove. I'd reached out to, to area coaches and said, you know, do you have any kids who just could use a little encouragement and need a break? And uh, well, one of the neat stories, I was able to connect with the uh, Chicago Ace program. That the, that the Chicago White Sox do. And one of their players used the glove I gave him when his team played at the Little League Field of Dreams game this year. So that was pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. I, I'm, I'm telling you, there, there are so many. Uh, it brought back a lot of memories uh, when I started talking to you and emailing with you about all the times in my life I've done that and I never really paid much attention to it but it really was uh, you know I, I'm going back I mean I could I, could, I would started thinking of stories from when I was just a little kid the first time I played catch I mean all those things that you remember and and it just it was very very cool I, I appreciate it thank you for you know doing this I, I think I mean this this was a great I mean I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to that 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 uh, uh, growing up I don't know. There's probably not too many people who haven't uh, um, played catch, have a catch, <laughs> at some point. But uh, but you have had some uh, other interesting travels in your life. You you spoke at the Hall of Fame, the National Baseball Hall of Fame. I did. What um, what was that? That was um, towards the this year, beginning of 2017. I'd worked on a project with Nate Ricker, who owns Baseball Seams Company, and we did a book together called America at the Seams. And he, uh, Baseball Seams Company, what they do is they create art out of baseballs that aren't any good anymore to, to be used on, on the field. So baseballs that are waterlogged or shredded or torn or, or just people that you tend to, to throw away, not even use for batting practice. 
he takes him, he tears him apart and turns him into art. And wow. So he created a, a massive map that's about, um, I think it's like five and a half, six feet wide um, uh, of the United States. And each state on the map is made from baseballs that came from that state. And the baseballs from each state are tied to a particular story. And so I wrote each wow. state story. And so it's this big coffee table book. Um, it's called, uh, just called America at the Scenes. And we unveiled the map for the first time at, at, uh, at Cooperstown. And we're invited to participate in the symposium. And, and we got to share stories uh, of how baseball brings people together, really. And it was, uh, it was such an incredible experience. I bet. I, I, I can only imagine. And that is an absolutely amazing uh piece of work i mean very very cool you wrote something about all 50 states yes i know it was wow so, uh, finding finding specific stories i mean the the parameters i was given is to find stories of hope of he healing of, of how baseball yes. is more than a game and one of my favorite this is, this is probably one of my favorite stories from that whole experience um i had been researching uh mississippi for months and could not find a baseball story in Mississippi. I mean, every every sports story in, in Mississippi was pertained to college football. I mean, that's, that's all <laughs> I, mean, I was looking and looking and looking. And eventually I found this one story and it was a, it was a make a wish story. It was about this young boy and his name was Sam and, and he had uh, he had cancer and it wasn't good. And his, his make a wish story was uh, to have a baseball field built in his backyard. That's that's what he wanted, a baseball field, and then host a, an official little league game at, at at Ferris Field, and it was a great story. But I had already written a different story that involved um, parents and how baseball was healing when mm -hmm. uh, after the death of their daughter, and so I did not, I didn't, <laughs> to be honest, I didn't have it in me as a parent to write another story about losing a kid. I, mm -hmm. I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with that. And I was just striking out. Uh, there you go, baseball metaphor with uh, there you go. all over the place. And all of a sudden, somehow, thanks to the wonders of the web that we've talked about, his name popped up for, for uh, something he was doing in college, for a documentary project he was working on in college. And I reached out to him and I said, wait, are you the boy that had cancer and had a baseball field and wow. make a work and all that stuff. He's like, that's me. So I explained the whole project to him and, and set up a time to call him and interview him. And in just the most awkward interview possible, I said, I am so glad you are alive. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, came, that came out of left field. So yeah, he's, he's five for a second, he says, well, <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it too. I <laughs> so, bet, right? <laughs> so that 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 idea came out of left field, as they say, for another another yeah. another baseball metaphor. Uh, no, I think these are great. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You know, you're you're doing something that's real and tangible, and you're 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 uh, impacting and you know people's lives, that, you know potentially that are that are seeing it, as opposed to people who are on the internet just kind of reposting a picture that somebody took a hundred years ago and taking credit for it. You know, like it just, <laughs> you know, it just it. These are the kinds of things that I I, I really hope people uh, can can uh, appreciate and and check out because I think it's very very cool. Uh, so you've written I I mean God I was perusing through how many hundreds of different articles that you have written about but you've also written a number of other books I'm gonna put a another one up and we just touch on a few of them because they I thought that they were uh, pretty interesting catch and release tell us just a little bit about this one <laughs> it's it's uh, another um, so there there was this uh... Gosh, this is so funny. This <laughs> idea of can you be the world's best catch player? Mm -hmm. Well, no, you can't be the world's best catch player because you're always depending on 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 the help of someone else. Right. And, and so, um, I, I tried to set as as many unofficial world records as possible, traveling around, meeting people, and playing catch. And um, 
But what was neat is that became an adventure and a book in, uh, it's, it was such a tangent, but learning about the realities of human trafficking. And mm -hmm. um, so I was able to use the lightheartedness of playing catch to, to open doors for conversations about this and the reality of human trafficking that, uh, I mean, Springfield, we, we're sitting on two highways. So, I mean, it's, it's a reality here uh, in my, in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's a story um, l largely about that. And, and people met through that experience. One, uh, one experience that, that jumps out from that um, is uh, I went to, to California and I got to play catch with Rob Bell, who is a very prolific but rather controversial, uh, controversial author. And he and I were, were meeting on, on the beach uh, to play catch. He just got done surfing that morning. And so the, but my friend, Mike, who's driving me to meet Rob, he said, well, you should be seeing ocean right now, just this whole way. And it was just completely shrouded in fog. I mean, you couldn't see hundred yards. And, and we, we get to the beach and, and Rob and I are sharing stories and just kind of getting to know each other and tossing the ball and everything. And he's saying, well, can you throw curveballs? Can you throw sliders? And I was like, well, I can. I don't do anything anymore, but I, I can at least get the right spin. And the whole time we're talking about it and I'm, I'm still, I'm kind of confessing my struggles of, you know, I'm at a crossroads in my life. I'm not sure what the mm -hmm. future holds. And he just looks up to me and he, he comes up to me and just, puts his arms around me and says, you know what? The fog is going to lift. And, and those words, uh, yeah, it's just resonated mm -hmm. deep inside of me. And, and so that book really started in, intentionally, um, of, of taking care of myself physically and, and uh, with the with the with the hope and the dream of trying to find a way to get back on the baseball field mm -hmm. to, to play awesome. competitive meaningful meaningful games again so awesome. that, that's, that's, that's a fun story one that's i said and i mentioned this earlier how you can get into a lot of other topics through sports and baseball in particular uh, you know, so there's a great example, uh, but this, I want to just touch on one more so people could see it as well, is uh, the striking out, uh, you, just to have another tie-in to Field of Dreams, uh, you actually uh, got to work with or, or speak with, uh, um, with uh, W.P. Kinsella? I did. I awesome. Did. So tell yeah. us, tell us about the subject. Why this subject, and how that all, what all happened here? Um, all right. So this is following up uh, catch and release, and uh, I'm I'm trying to figure out a way to get back on the field and play. Uh, living in Springfield, we have several several good, uh, high quality baseball programs: Missouri State University, Drury University, Evangel College, and um, I had a friend who was the the coach. At, at Drury University, I reached out to him. I said, hey, would there be any way I could come and just, you know, practice with you guys, maybe shag balls during batting practice, uh, take some soft toss in the cages just to try and get some baseball related muscles moving again. And he, he just opened the door, said, come on out. And uh, so I was reading the paper one day and, and the paper said uh, something along the lines of, uh, of Coach Howard Bell baseball coach at Glendale University diagnosed with ALS. And it took me some time to research it and confirm it, but Howard Bell was one of my first personal baseball heroes. His brother, his younger brother, Darren and I grew up playing baseball together on the same team. But Howard was enough older that, I mean, he, he was a standout. He played shortstop at Missouri State. He had a grand slam against University of Missouri. And th these are stories that I read about him playing in, in the sports. So I knew of him from what I read of him in the sports page. I, every morning I'd wake up, I'd read the comics, I'd read the sports page. And, and so I knew of Howard literally only through, uh, th through, through the paper. 
And then again, th thanks to the paper, I I'm alerted to his diagnosis with ALS. And ALS was something that I studied when I was in college. And, and so, um, so because of his diagnosis, through his diagnosis, we formed a friendship. And, and coming back to, to Springfield after being in Kansas City for, for a dozen years, um, it was just a, it was just a way that that we he, we related, and um, he faced ALS with with great courage, with great vulnerability, um, and just opened his lives to his family and friends and, and to his to his ball players, and uh, something that has continued on in his legacy is there's now an annual battle for Bell between the the two. Uh, the biggest baseball programs, Missouri State is Division One, Drury is Division Two, and they play an annual baseball game every year with the proceeds benefiting cool. the ALS Foundation. And so I was just, um, I was just fortunate to be able to spend time with him and and to learn from him as he was living in the reality of, of a mm -hmm. difficult diagnosis. Awesome. Uh, I tell you what. <clears throat> Uh, hats off to you, man. You, you, a lot of what you write about and the books you've written and the things you've been involved with, I think, uh, bring some awareness and shine a light uh, on a lot of, you know, in some some ways, some difficult situations that people are in, and and provide some inspiration. And you know, it's always funny, right? <clears throat> you hear people talk, um, you know, about, um, uh, you know leaving behind a legacy you know you want to live forever you want to have something to, to and how do, how you do that is by passing these things on passing them on to your kids and 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 kind of paying it forward to that next generation and i, I really i appreciate all the things that you have written and touched on and, and i think it's just fantastic i mean I, I really really do so tell us i mean that to me uh i, I know you have a a quote on your website about uh, um how to live a good story. Uh, I think all of these things we've talked about are, are kind of, you know, pieces of all that story. But what, tell us what what does that mean when you when you say that? I think one of the one of the biggest things I learned through the year of playing catch is um, the importance of paying attention, and and playing catch really grounds you in the present moment. You cannot be distracted and, and, and play catch or else you're going to injure this someone or you're going to get injured. I mean, the, the, the rhythm uh, of, of throwing and catching the ball keeps you right here. And so um, I, I really appreciate that about the activity. And I think we need that reminder, as you referred to earlier, that, that sometimes we're so distracted by screens, we forget to, to live in the fullness of the moment. So this summer, my family took a, a train trip and went on a, a, a family vacation. And for the first time, I got to see the Grand Canyon, which uh, words don't do it justice. Pictures, it's impossible to ca capture in pictures. Um, but what I knew uh, going to see the Grand Canyon is when we got there, I wanted to play catch with my daughters um, <laughs> just so I would ground myself in in that moment and i had awesome. never been more nervous throwing a baseball than we're standing at. i was about um it was about five feet from the rim we wow. were on the uh uh eastern rim uh, of the canyon and my daughter's probably about um 35 ish feet away from me and and when you are relaxed and when you're throwing the ball right to, 60 or 80 feet away you know your body gets into this rhythm and you just trust the ball and let it go and mm -hmm. no this was full guiding and just like all right just go, yep. go in the direction <laughs> and get to her glove and 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 land and um and so we start playing catch and my wife captured just this this gorgeous picture of me holding my glove out waiting for my daughter to return the throw and i look behind my daughter and all of a sudden people are watching us play catch right instead of looking out at the canyon <laughs> they started walking towards us i was like nope nope i don't need this kind of pressure <laughs> just, probably only 30 times or whatever but um that to, to live a good story is to take the risks necessary 
to, to push on through the fears that hold you back and overcome the obstacles in order to uh, pursue, pursue your goals, pr to pursue awesome. your dreams that are on your heart. Awesome. And, and you know, everybody has them. Um, you, 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 uh, you, you, that's exactly what you just said is exactly right. Most of the time when people, uh, you know, it's through lack maybe of self-confidence in yourself. Um, you know, I, I talked to some of these people who were involved in the Josh Gibson, the card art campaign, and many of them are creating, um, you know, one of a kind and, and different pieces of, of art. And all of them have told me, um, boy, you, you always wonder when you're done with it, is anybody going to like it? You know, <laughs> is anybody going to appreciate it? Is it good enough kind of thing? And I think those are the types of things that people have in their mind all the time in, in, in many aspects of what they do. And, and you need to have, um, you know, confidence without being arrogant, I think, is, is key, <laughs> right? But... Um, Believing that what you're doing is the right thing, and and that I I think is uh, is another key part of all that because um, if you're doing it for the right reasons, it just kind of flows. It's like it's like that was a great what you just said about when you're in that game of catch and you start throwing, it just happens, right? You you're not you stop thinking about it, and 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 your body and and it's it's doing you're doing it. As soon as the second you try to guide it. <laughs> is when it's going to be in the dirt, right? <laughs> and so, you know, it's really kind of a cool analogy for how to live your life, you know? You got to kind of uh, go with the flow. Trust in uh, what you're doing, you know? Um, so what are you working on now? What do you got? I mean, I'm, I imagine you've got a couple irons or something in the fire, right? Uh, well, uh, the unrelated to baseball, I've got a novel that I'm finishing that's uh, – being shopped around and hopefully by this time next year you know people are reading a a, a, a father-daughter story of cool. a completely different kind but the uh, the project that i'm working on that's that's keeping me grounded and passionate and uh, ridiculously humble right now is i play in a uh, in the grip and rip baseball league it is a, <laughs> a very competitive uh, wood bat tryout uh, semi-pro baseball league here in, wow. in West Missouri and uh, I am this, this is my team the Ozark Mountain Ducks I was going to ask you about that hat because I've got a bunch of guys who are into uh, hat collecting and minor league baseball and everything else so, so well, tell us about them yeah they, they used to be a single a minor league team about 20 years ago they were they uh, were never really a very good franchise and then uh, after three or four years in the area uh, they were sold and bought out by a group in Florida, and so um, Ozark uh, Mountain. What what are they called? Ozark Mountain Ducks. <laughs> Ozark Mountain Ducks. Okay, yeah, uh, cool. Great. So the the league that I play in, uh, we are a town based league. We have six teams, and the the commissioner was able to get the naming rights and, and to the old old Mountain Ducks and nice. Mountain Ducks. What's what's really neat about it is um, we play in the stadium that was built for the original mountain ducks cool and so uh last year uh, last year i tried out uh and uh, and the mountain ducks in their first year of being reincarnated we won the championship so that was and my favorite part of it is my uh, my training partner was was the the hero of the championship game with the uh with the the walk-off hit in the i can't remember <laughs> the 11th or the 12th inning <laughs> But awesome. uh, we're back at it. We uh, just had our second game on Sunday. We're two and zero this year, and cool. uh, and and pitching is just lights. I mean, these are guys that are still touching upper eighties, and and wow, like, yeah, uh, with with sliders that make your knees shake, and <laughs> and, and it, we've got. Um, Oh, several former minor leaguers at tryouts. We had a former major leaguer who was who was uh, interested in playing, but he said he thought he, he'd try it again next year. Um, so there is a whole lot of talent, and then there's me. Um, and and uh, I am, I am by ten years, I am the oldest person on my team, and and so I I am content to to work hard at being a bench warmer and to being the best teammate and encourager 
that I can, and cool. and, and I'm just delighted to get in at bats, and spend time in, in left field, uh, t- fighting off the sun. <laughs> awesome! It, it, oh, it's incredible! It's I, so bet, I bet, I uh, bet. The uh, one last thing I wanted to ask you about, and I, we won't talk about 1980. But um, you, uh, you. <laughs> we, before we get on here, I, we won't bring that up about the Phillies winning their first World Series over Kansas City. But, but the in 20, 2015, uh, did you actually get to go? Did you go to the White House with the team? I did. I did. Oh my God! You got to just if you tell us about that because that had to be a heck of an experience too. Okay, so I was. <laughs> wow, how do I tell this? Story? I was working on a nonfiction story, kind of like what we have been talking about, about how baseball impacts um, all, all of our culture through it these does. different channels. Mm-hmm. And um, halfway through 2015 on, on 4th of July, I broke my ankle, uh, broke it two places. And um, I was really depressed, really struggling. And the Royals were just playing lights. So watching the Royals play such good baseball was basically my therapy that, that kept me in a good frame of mind for the the remainder of 2015. So at at the end of the year, uh, they win the world series and Josh Ernest was the press secretary for Barack Obama at the time. And he was a huge, huge Royals fan, very active in Twitter and I just reached out and said, hey, I'm working on this book about baseball, blah, blah, blah. Would love to interview you as a Royals fan wow. in the White House. And so we did like a 45-minute interview, and I worked on the story. And uh, at the end of the story, I said, at the end of the interview, I said, well, if you need me to come support the team when they come for the celebration, you just let me know. And he said something, something along the lines of, I know how to find you. And I was like, oh, that was kind of creepy. <laughs> so 2016 comes along, and I got a job working for the Springfield Cardinals as part of the field crew and learning about how to maintain the field mm-hmm. and do the bases and the lines and, and repair mounds and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And while I was doing that job, I learned that the ankle that was broken that we thought had healed hadn't. <sighs> I had to have uh, reconstructive ankle surgery. A portion of the bone was removed and some screws were put in. And so I had to basically was starting over mm-hmm. and it was, you know, no walking and then learning how to walk. And, and shortly after, I think it was, I had just started walking without crutches. I haven't, I still had an in shoe ankle brace on and we were down in Texas. We were down in Houston visiting in-laws and it was, um, it was All Star Weekend, uh, All Star Weekend 2016, and we're, we're watching Giancarlo Stanton just hit these massive, massive home runs during the home run derby. And I happened to notice that I have an email, and I look at it, and it says, uh, "You and your daughters are formally invited to the White House celebration of the World Championship, Kansas City Royals. Fill out this information in the next." Oh week. wow! Get it back to us. And I looked at it. And I was like, oh, this is some kind of spam joke. This isn't real or whatever. <laughs> and then I started looking at it more, and it's from a .gov address. And awesome. then I realized that the person is this per. And I was like, I showed it to my wife. I said, um, we just got an invitation to go to D.C. Awesome. So we're in Houston. Our van is in a repair shop in Houston. We had survived a semi-small tornado or something on the drive down to Houston. <laughs> and we packed up, drove to Springfield, got it into our mechanic who repaired it, and took a two-day drive to... Oh, to wow. Um, they drove through Pennsylvania. I got to, got to experience some of those tunnels. Mm-hmm. And, and we go to D.C. And all of a sudden, uh, the, the, the hardest part of this trip... Uh, was only three of us could go in. It was me and my daughter. My wife was not able to go into the, but we went into the east east wing of the White House and we're there. That is awesome. And we got pictures and all this kind of, I mean, so, you know, that year, my daughters go back to school and they're like, teachers are, well, tell us what you did this year. <laughs> we went to the White House. 
Oh man. Top that, right? <laughs> after after going in, it was a fantastic oh, experience inside the White House. I can only imagine for two days, and I am still relearning how to walk. Uh huh. Get back to Springfield a week later, and I had my first um, physical therapy appointment. And the physical therapist is working on my ankle and all this, and she's like, "Something has changed." <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, Something has changed about you? Really guilty. And I was like, well, you're going to find out one way or the other. We've been in Washington, D.C., and I've been walking like five or six miles a day, every day, just <laughs> as it's the only way you can go around. And she said, you have basically skipped your first two months of therapy. I would awesome. not recommend that to anyone. Awesome. And, and so the book that I was working on, that was this interview book, um, it never, it never came to light. It got turned, and this is going to sound so funny because the crossover is so little, but it got turned into uh, my first novel, uh, which is called dream field. Ah. And, um, it's just a, a, a feel good story, uh, about, about again, uh, of course about baseball and all of life. Awesome. I, I tell you what, man, I can listen to your, I mean, you, you your stories are, are fantastic. I can listen, I'm sure you, I, I can listen to these all day. I, I encourage people to go to your website, ethanbryan.com. You've got your books listed. You've got a whole bunch of your writing listed. Uh, they can find your books on Amazon and other places as well, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Uh, I will, I am absolutely going to check out, uh, um, you know, as many as I can. I I tell you what, I'm definitely intrigued by the America at the Seams to have uh, to have that one for sure, and and absolutely the year of playing catch. I want I want to learn more about that that Odyssey because I think it's uh, it's some it's some very very cool stuff. Hats off to you, man. This. Uh, what you're doing, I think, is uh, uh, is very, very uh, cool. It's inspirational. I, I hope people appreciate and can apply some of these things to what they're doing and what, what they got going on in their own lives. Because I, I think uh, if they take the time, free your mind, have a catch, <laughs> you're going to find out that you can do and you can accomplish a lot of things. Uh, so I, I appreciate your time. This was a lot of fun, and uh, maybe down the road when you got some more things you wanna, uh, you got written, and you said you got another uh, uh, novel that you're working on. Would love to have you on down the road again and talk about it. I'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Ethan. Thank you so much. You have a good day. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.